Welcome to the Bold Top by Joe podcast, coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, peeps. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. And I'm going to grab a little bit of something from my fellow podcasters. There's a few of my uh, uh, friends that do this at the beginning of their show, and I think it is important. And uh, I realize why they do it, right? And they talk about their mental health, right? How is their mental health? And I'm going to add those to my show at the beginning of the show. Um, you know, I think it gets a little bit more personal, and like I said, it gets to you get to know who I am, and if there's anything going on, anything like that. So I think it's important, right? Uh, I mean, important to talk about if there's any issues and things like that. So my mental health is uh, pretty good. And I know Willie has, uh, he said something very important one day when we were, when I was a guest on the show, he said, just sometimes when somebody says, when you when you ask them, how's your mental health? And they say, good. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're good, you know, and that that is true. There are some people that might be afraid that, uh, they might be judged or look differently, you know, for whatever problems they're going through, right? Mental health or what's going on in their lives. But uh, for me, everything's good uh, so far. No, uh, you know, mental health is good. Just a lot of work, you know, just uh, trying to get everything going and you know, paying my bills and and taking care of the family and all those kinds of things, right? And uh, but other than that, you know, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Everything's good. Uh, back to podcasting, back to my regular podcasting schedule. So, you know, everything everything sounds good. So, I wanted to talk about um, I wanted to talk about a few few things. I'm gonna have uh, grab a few things from some articles, and I'm gonna talk about them. And uh, because I think it's important, some of this stuff is very important, and it's it's new, right? Some of the stuff that I that I read, um, it's like, huh, you know what the you know what this this doesn't make sense. So I was reading an article. All right, let's talk about the first one. The first one is um, this study, right? It's, this place is called, uh, this place, not this place, this, uh, this site is called, uh, I think it's called Study Finds, right? So the, the first article, it said, want to lose more weight? Move to a safer neighborhood, study says. So when I first read that, I was like, really? Really, but it all makes sense. Once I started reading the article, I'm like, oh man, this this makes sense. What they're what they're saying. So basically, they they had a they had a study where they realized that living in a safer neighborhood uh, was better for you, and not only that, but that would help you lose weight. And this is why. So. What their what their findings are is if you live in a safe neighborhood, uh, everything is you know you go to the you can go to the grocery store you you have gyms that are accessible to you you do a lot more walking you do a lot more stuff you stay more active right and when you live in a dangerous neighborhood you know people usually don't want to walk anywhere because it's dangerous uh, you know you can't even cycle or go out on a run because they're you know it's because it's dangerous right you're gonna get mugged or there's gonna be people harassing you and all these things so I do I do get it you know I I do kind of understand at first when you read it you're like wait that's kind of messed up like why why what is it what does that mean but no it's true right i mean it's harder for you like it you don't want to go anywhere because you're scared you don't want to go to the gym because you're scared you don't want to take a walk unless you're you know you're walking in the morning when there's people because you're scared so usually people that live in 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 tougher neighborhoods and dangerous neighborhoods, you know, they don't want to go outside, you know, because they're some people are afraid, so their activity level goes down, right? And usually, when you're in a safer neighborhood, you know, you see a lot of more people out there walking around and you know, exercising more and on their bikes and you know, taking their dogs on a walk and all kinds of stuff. So I, I do get the, I do get the the I understand the 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 study. It completely makes sense, you know, once you think about it, and you're like, oh, shit, yeah, that makes sense, you know what I mean? You're not afraid to to go anywhere, you know, you're you're not afraid to go work out and do things uh, when you are in a little bit of a safer uh, neighborhood, right? And, uh, you know, we grew up in, in some neighborhoods that were tough, as I said in 
one of my uh, my first uh, episode of uh, Tales from the Tales from the Homeland. But later on, we grew up in in really good neighborhoods that you know you could just walk out there and ride your bike and and do things and and you know walk around with your family and exercise and all those things, right? So yeah, I mean it makes sense, right? You know you're not gonna let your kids go out and go exercise outside when there's people out there, you know fighting each other violently so i get it you know that's uh i I get the study and it completely completely makes sense to me in in my head and now the other the other this other um this other article i was reading we changed the topic now to the second article here it says uh 70 71 percent of adults think it's rude to come into the office when sick when people say quote unquote it's just allergies. So, I believe this got a lot bigger during when COVID hit, right? If you guys remember when, I don't know if, if you guys did this or not, but you know I have all your allergies. So, my allergies are, I have something called sinusitis, right? And uh, I need like a surgery where they scrape the inside of your, like your nose area, right? And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But basically is you have year-round allergies all year round. Uh, and uh, you, you're, you're sneezing. You're, you're perfectly fine in the morning. You're walking around. You're doing good. And all of a sudden, boom, you just start sneezing. You start coughing. And uh, your nose starts watering. Your eyes start watering. It's just weird. You know what I mean? It's just weird. And... Uh, I think that uh, during the pandemic, I remember that, uh, man, sometimes I would be like holding, you know, I'm holding my, I'm trying not to cough or trying not to sneeze and I'm holding it in, right? And you get this thing in your throat and you're like trying to like, this person is trying to talk and you're like, hurry up and finish talking so I can walk away and I can, you know, cough because people will look at you weird, right? Every time you coughed or you sneeze, people right away looked, oh my God, he's got COVID, you know, and there's people that freak out, right? Because there was a lot of people that were dying, so people were freaking out every time they saw you with a with a Kleenex or when you were like cleaning your nose or when you were coughing, and you know that's tough, right? So I think this got a little bit bigger because of this, right? Because of the because people would say that, and I I would say that too. I would say that too. Like when I sneezed or coughed during the pandemic, uh, and like coworkers would look at me like, "Well, you got COVID or what?" And I'm like, "No, nah, man, I have allergies." and that is true. It was true. Like, it's just, it's just my allergies. I live in Arizona, man. It's, I mean, the dolphins, I mean, there was a place out here, it was called Dolphinaris, and they had uh, this Mexican company put a, a, a like a, kind of like a sea world, right? But it was just a bunch of dolphins. And these dolphins died because they ended up getting like hay fever or whatever because of the, the, all the, the pollen and all the dust and all the stuff that's in Arizona that's in the air. And the dolphins died. Because you know they 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 uh they died of the sickness, they died of sickness, right? They got sick and they had to close this place down. It was a big old deal. So I mean, you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff in the air out here in Arizona, and uh, you ne- you don't necessarily have to have COVID. But I had to like find myself defending defending myself during COVID a lot because people do look at you weird and be like, "Oh man," and I would have to say that. Oh yeah, man. Oh, dude, just the allergies, man. They're getting me. I. I tested myself this morning. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, damn. Like, why do we have to say that shit? You know what I mean? It's like, people are so afraid of everything now. Like, oh my God, uh, he's coughing. Oh shit, man, that guy needs to go home. He's coughing. He's got COVID. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't do shit. You can't do shit. So sometimes I'll, you know, I'm over there choking and I'm like trying to pass, you know, trying to pass saliva. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to cough. And they're going to look at me weird and all kinds of shit, right? And, uh, yeah, I had to go through that. So I can see what that report, why people are, uh, you know, they freak out and I, they find it rude. I don't find it rude. I mean, come on. Before COVID, you know, people would come in sick and, you know, with the sniffles or, yeah, I got a little bit of, you know, got a little bit sick over the weekend. I'm good now. I'm getting over it. This and that. You'll be you'll be all right, right? They're just You'll just have a Kleenex box next to your office or by your station, whatever, your, whatever job you have. And you'll be good, right? Now it's like... You know, I, oh my God, I can't believe this person came in to work like this. He's sick. Oh my God, she's sick. And it's like people make this huge thing, right? They make this big deal about it. Look, if you already been, we've been through COVID and you didn't die, nothing happened to you and you're still here, you're fine. 
Nothing's going to happen to you. You are fine. You're not just going to magically get COVID and die all of a sudden. You already got it. You made it through. You are fine. You're good. You know what I mean? It's like these people freak out when they see somebody sneezing or coughing. And, you know, it just became this stereotype, right? That if you cough or you sneeze, you must have COVID. You know, so I don't find it rude at all if you come in with the sniffles and stuff like that, you know, because I know that, hey, that might be seasonal allergies or he might just or he or she might have allergies all year round. Right. So, I mean, you just you just don't know. Right. You just you just don't know. And you can't assume and you just can't be like, yeah, that's rude. I can't believe they're coming in like that. That's rude. I mean, that's that's just ridiculous. That's just people living scared. You know, they're living scared that, you know, that uh, they're going to they're going to get COVID and die and all kinds of stuff. You know, I, I get it. You know what I mean? There's a, pe- a lot of people died during that pandemic. A lot of elderly people, a lot of people with uh, with uh, what do you call that? Uh, with with conditions that they already had, you know, heart disease and all this stuff, diabetes and all this, you know, and overweight issues. And so, I mean, it's, it's I think it's more like common sense when it comes to things like that, when you really put it in perspective. If you are if you're in bad health, if you're in bad health, then you have more of a chance to get sick, right? Because your immune system. So you know it's 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 pretty simple, right? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know, you know, I don't know why people why people think it's rude. I mean, you know, I mean, just cover up, use your sleeve, right? Don't use your hands to cough on your hands. Use your sleeve. Use hand sanitizer. Go wash your hands in the bathroom. Uh, do all those kinds of things, right? Keep keep a Kleenex box next to you or handkerchief, handkerchief, chief, <laughs> handkerchief. Keep a handkerchief next to you. <laughs> keep one of those things if you're a guy, you know. Keep one of those on your in your pocket. Um, you know all those things. I mean, there's really nothing you can do, right? I, I think people need to stop and they need to uh, they need to stop living living scared. You know, what I mean, they just need to stop living scared. And, uh, you know, but I do get it, you know, and maybe those people, some people, maybe they lost a lot, they lost uh, loved ones and, you know, so they, they freak out or maybe they do have a pre-existing condition and they're scared, you know, but I mean, come on, you can't just keep everybody, you know, if that was the case, I would never go to work. I would always be working from home because I'm al- I always have my, you know, most of the time I have a runny nose or uh, my eyes are watery or I'm sneezing for like five, ten seconds in a row. And then after that, I'm good. I mean, if that was the case, I wouldn't even be allowed to go to work. I mean, I, I think it's silly. And uh, I don't think I don't find that to be to be a, a problem at all. Right. It's just I mean, it's just like I said, it's just because of COVID. It's just, I think it got I think it got a little bit uh, I think it got a little bit out of hand because of that. uh because of that situation but uh yeah so let's move on to the next uh let's move on to the next article here that i have here and uh i'm gonna try to do three articles and and uh <laughs> and and see what uh see what we can get out of it right see what we can see see what i have to say about the situation so here's the next one here it says uh uh, and we talked about, I talked about this in the beginning of the show. It says, uh, cases of depression in the U.S. reach all-time highs. You know, a new survey reveals, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this also has to do a lot with, uh, with you know, with what happened, right? With COVID and, and all that stuff. And, yeah, I mean, it, it did put a lot of people in depression. Um, a lot of people had to go back home or were fired or lost everything. And, I mean, what do you expect, Right. I mean, what do you what do you expect when you lose everything, or you lose your job, or you can't even live somewhere because the rent's too high now? You can't afford it. Uh, there's nobody there to help you. Um, the cost of living has gone up. Everything's expensive: eggs, food, milk. Everything costs an arm and a leg now. I mean, you go and get like, you know, a little bit of gro. You go around and you you do a little bit of grocery shopping, and you're about a hundred bucks. You know, I mean, just like that, boom, gone, hundred bucks. You know, and so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of depression. There's a lot of people that were. That once you get stuck inside your your apartment or your house or whatever, you're working inside, working from home or staying home, and you're not going outside, you're not exercising, you're not being active, you're not doing your thing, you're not going to the grocery store, you are going to get depressed inside the house. 
Absolutely. I, you know, when there was a few days that I had to work from home when I started this new position and oh my God, I couldn't get out of the house. Like I was like, I need to get out of here. Like I need to start, I need to go now, you know, and uh, I needed, I needed to work from home because, uh, you know, there wasn't going to be, my bosses weren't going to be in the office. So like, just go ahead and work from home and research this company's and uh, see what you can do, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, yeah. So I did that. And the first day was pretty cool, right? Because I was at home, at the comfort of my house, um, on my, with my laptop from work, new position. But then it got old really fast, about five hours onto the job, onto the, the research and this. And I was like, man, I can't. This this is so hard to be in the house. Then you start, you know, you, you start feeling moody. You start feeling like tired. You know, you don't want to do anything. You're just on the computer all day. Then you you don't leave the scenery, right? You just kind of walk, to go to the restroom, get soda, get a drink, get something, go to the, you know, eat, make some food, come back to the computer, and then everybody's getting off of work, your wife or your husband gets home, and then the kids are home, and then you're go to, you go to sleep. So, yeah, that will totally impact your life if you're just at home, and that also would, you know, give you depression, absolutely. I mean, you we are humans. We have to be able to interact with other humans introvert or extrovert whatever the heck you are you have to have interaction with people you have to you have to because you will you will end up in depression if you talk to nobody you will end up sad because you have nobody to talk to you have nobody to for guidance you have nobody to have a beer with or have a coffee with or go out on a morning jog or walk or or talk on the phone or none of that right you you would get depressed right especially if you're having some issues where you know you lost a lot of stuff you lost family you're you know like all these things right you work from home a lot that's all you do you don't leave the house and when you leave the house everything's strange right everything is strange you're like oh my god like can i still drive i mean i feel weird and you know what i mean so yeah absolutely absolutely i feel like there's a lot of there's a lot more uh the the depression is higher, you know, and like I said, the the prices are are incredible, right? I mean, you have to make a really good wage in order for you to make it. I mean, you go to apartments. When I moved out, I was eighteen years old. I moved out when I graduated high school. As soon as I graduated, I think I uh, I wasn't even eighteen. I was like almost eighteen, and uh, I I had to get a waiver to move into this apartment complex, right? Because I wasn't 18 yet. So I got the apartment, but when I was 18, I was able to move in. And, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was different, right? It was different because, you know, when, uh, when you pay back in the day, you know, my rent was $300 a month, right? $300 a month. And I lived in the basement floor in the apartment complex. Those apartments were like four stories. So I lived all the way to the bottom, right, in the basement. And it was hard for me to live back then. But it, $300, right? It was, you can have a few jobs or a really good job and you have no problem paying it, right? Now, if you're 18 years old, 19 years old, and you want to move out on your own, you basically have to be like a CEO somewhere because the, the apartments are like $1,600 a month. You know, $1,600, $1,500, $1,400 for these shacks. You know what I mean? For these tiny ass apartments. You go to get a house, $2,000, $1,800, $2,500, two bedroom, you know, three, three bedroom, three grand. I mean, so it's, it is impossible to live you know it is they 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 have made it impossible for us to live and i don't understand this whole inflation shit and this whole economics thing so like if you're listening to this and this is what you do for a living you know i still don't give a shit it's impossible for people to live i don't give a rat's ass about the inflation or the bullshit that's going on or the bullshit government what they're doing and the oil and the this and that the point is is that it's hard to live out here. It is hard for a younger person now. It is hard for them to even think about getting an apartment to move out. It is hard for them to even get a couple of roommates and move out 
because the rent is so damn high. Everything is so high. You can't even go get a vehicle. Every vehicle now, it's like all the price tags are the same. You go get a car, 60000 What? Since when is this car? Yes, we get it. They pay more money. They had to give raises and inflation and the bullshit and supply and demand and blah, blah, blah. And I get a little bit of that, right? But $60,000 for a freaking truck that was like 39000 like 10 years ago, six, seven years ago, nobody can get a truck now. Nobody can go buy a new car now. And if you get a new car, you're paying $600 a month plus insurance. And when you're that young, 19, 20, your, your insurance is through the roof, right? The interest rates are through the roof. Everything's through the roof. So now you got to worry about paying for your apartment, paying for your car. Oh, I got two more roommates, but they got to worry about paying for their shit too. Now you got to buy food. Well, you got to go buy eggs for $8 a freaking carton. You know what I mean? You got to go buy milk for $4. You know, so everything adds up. Everything is expensive besides your damn cell phone. The cell phone has always been the same. It's $100 or $60 for unlimited. That shit's never changed. Internet's cheap too. You know, you can just use Amazon. And that stuff has gotten a lot better, right? Where you we don't use the internet. We don't use like cable like we used to. But everything else is expensive. I mean, I don't need freaking cable to f- freaking pay my, you know, to buy a carton of eggs. I need money, right? You need money to live, you know? So everything has just been jacked up. The prices have been jacked up through the roof. And uh, it's hard, you know what I mean? So that kind of shit will put people into depression, you know? Absolutely. That that kind of stuff will put you in depression. I would be like, fuck, man. Like, I can't pay for shit. I can't do shit. You know, I mean, I can't go out with my friends. I can barely pay my bills. Like, I just might as well be a loser and move back to the house, right, where I don't have to pay any bills and maybe just pick up dog shit once in a while. I mean, that's the kind of mentality that you're pushing, that that this country is pushing people to, is uh, instead of like, hey, man, you got to be a hard worker, you know, this and that, and, you know, you do this, and the more experience you have, you get more money, and you, you'll have a good life. Well, yeah, that was back in the day. Now it's like you can do all those things and you're still going to be screwed because you can't afford to live anywhere. So you have more people just not wanting to work, right? Or trying to apply for government assistance. There's not enough houses out there. You know what I mean? It's just there's a lot of houses, but there's not a whole lot of people out there wanting to put these houses through the government assistance program, right? So because usually... Sometimes they get trashed and all this stuff, right? So and I get it, right? I get it as a homeowner. You don't want to keep forking and forking money out and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, it's tough. You know what I mean? It's tough. And you, you see the government and all this shit. They see these guys, these people helping other countries. And you're like, man, why don't you help your, why don't you help the, your citizens here? Why don't you help the American people here? I mean, they're People are struggling. Some people don't have enough money to buy shit. And then you have studies and then you have these things about, you know, oh, you got a depression. This is like, well, what the fuck do you expect when people can't do shit? You know what I mean? Yeah. the You know, maybe some people that are listening to the show that make a shit ton of money. They're like, ah, oh, you know, we're good. Well, yeah, you might be good, but not everybody's good, right? Not everybody is good. You know what I mean? Not everybody is good. So, yeah, absolutely. I can, I can kind of, I, I can, I can see that a hundred percent. Why there is more depressed people? Uh, why is that an all time high? Shit. I mean, it's self explanatory. It's all right there. Look at all the violence, school violence. I talked about that in my last episode. You know, talk about all that bullshit going on, on the internet. You know, all that violence that the internet's showing. You know, all that stuff that's happening. You know, all these crazy ass things that are happening around us and wars and this and that. And you don't know if we're going to go to war, if this president is going to fuck it up or the next president is going to fuck it up and all the drama. And you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, if you don't have thick skin and you're easy, you're very sensitive, you're going to be depressed. You're going to be like, shit, this sucks. Like, I can't do shit in this country. I'm a loser. You know, I don't want to work anymore. You know, I can't even pay my own damn bills. And some people are trying. Some people are trying to live on their own. They're trying to work hard. They're trying to get a college education. They're trying to um, to do the right thing. But it's it's they make it harder and harder for for people to live, right? And now just think about it. So say you didn't get an education and now you're in your 40s and your 50s. And you had to settle for a shitty-ass job with this kinds of prices. Forget it. You know what I mean? You, you're in your 40s and 50s. And you're like, shit. You know what I mean? And then you, the first thing that you do is you blame yourself. Man, I should have gotten a better education. I should. There's, 
there is people with better educations, with college degrees, with all kinds of shit that live like that, that still can't pay their shit. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, absolutely. You know, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I agree with the with the situation with the article. Like, I understand why. I understand why there is more depression. Absolutely, hundred percent. You know, so this is something that I can't fix. This is something that I don't have answers to. Um, this is something that the government and the people that are running this country are the only ones that can solve issues like this. We can't do shit. Us as people, we can all gather up together and donate and do this. It ain't gonna do nothing. It's gonna do. There's just too many people out in this world. There is too many people in this country that we can't help everyone. But when your government is helping everybody else around the world, it makes us look bad. It makes the people in this country go into a little bit more of an anxiety, more and more depression. Because you look at that, you're like, man, I'm over here in need trying to feed the kids. I'm broke. I'm working five jobs, this and that. And you guys can't even help me with any assistance. But you're sending millions of dollars to Ukraine. So those kinds of things are the things that I see that it would, if I was in that kind of situation, that's what I would look at. I'm like, damn, it's hard to get any help. I mean, I heard people trying to go get help for housing or food stamps and this and that, right? And it, it's hard. It, they make it to where it's like it's impossible to get help in some states. You know what I mean? So it's like people are hungry, right? People are hungry. People are desperate. Some people are trying to make a living. You know, trying to get their trying to trying to trying to do it, man. It's hard to catch up. When you lose everything, it's hard to catch up when everything's so damn expensive and your job doesn't pay you enough, no matter what education you have. Some places don't want to fucking pay you any money. You know what I mean? So it's it's tough, right? It's just it's just tough uh, for a younger person. It's going to be tougher for them because, you know, when the kids are 18, 19 now or 13, 12, whatever age they are now, by the time they get to be adults and they get to be in their, you know, 20s and 30s and try to have a family the fucking houses are gonna be like five thousand dollars a month for a one bedroom you know what i mean so there's gotta be hopefully this next election hopefully there's uh some changes and we actually vote for a president that's good not for some wacko most of these dudes are wackos listen to what i'm saying all these dudes are surrounded by bullshit and politics and money we need to vote for people that are for the good of the country, not for these people that are constantly in the news. And yes, uh, you know, fake news is fake news. All these people are the same. All of them. They all have shit. They all they all have ties to somebody. We need to vote for somebody else. Somebody that is not tied into any of these clown bags. We need to vote for somebody that is for the good interest of the American people, right? That doesn't have ties to whoever the hell they have ties or what corporation or what they've done or they married this or he's the husband of this or she's the daughter of this politician. Or I mean, all these people are tied into each other, right? And it's the same bullshit. You can vote for whoever is going to be Democrat or Republican right now and it's going to be the same shit because these people are the same. These people are the same. We got to vote for somebody different. Look for the people that are looking for the good things. You know, I mean, people that are not tied into this bullshit, like I said. We need to find, we need to find the good people. Don't vote, they, don't vote a certain way because your grandfather voted that way. It's not the same times. And even in those times, shit was corrupt. It's not the same. You know what I mean? You don't have to vote Republican or Democrat because your family's been voting like that for 30 fucking years. Look into other candidates and other possibilities and people that are not always in the damn news about something stupid that they're doing or some stupid law that they're passing or anything like that. That's why I hate politics. You know what I mean? I enjoy listening to, I have this show that I listen to, this podcast called Whiskey Hell, and I enjoy listening to it, but I, you know, sometimes it's too much for me because I hate politics. I hate the whole thing about politics. I hate how crooked it is and everybody gets away with shit. And uh, if it was one of us, we wouldn't get away with nothing, right? We'll be in prison. So it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's shit like that that pisses me off that I hate talking about politics, but it's true. You know what I mean? It's true. Like we need as an American people, and I don't know shit, all right? So don't take any advice and be like, oh, he told me to go vote for somebody. No, I'm just telling you, look at other people. Look at other Look at look at what they do, right? Are, are they, you know, are they constantly bombarded with bullshit that they're doing, or are they saying ridiculous things? And you know what I mean. Look at look at your candidates and be like, okay, this person's always out of out of the eye. 
They don't have any issues. They just want what's good for the country. Yeah, it's a nobody. It's they don't, you know, whatever, but they want good things to happen. You know, these other dudes are in it for the money. You know, they they're they're tied in with people. They owe favors, you know, all that kinds of stuff, right? They're tarnished. They're, you know, they're 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 no good. So that's why we keep going into this big old circle, back and forth, back and forth with these people that have been in these in these positions forever. That they're, they're the same people over and over and over and over again. And I think that we need to start looking for a better solution, right, in this country. Maybe uh, maybe twist it up a little bit and. And and vote for a different party, man. Look for something different. Look for good people, right? Good people that are not that are not any of these clowns that are trying to run for president. I mean, these guys are all jacked up. You you look at their stuff and you're like, oh my god, you're like everybody has issues with shit, and they all do weird shit, and it's just like you know, it, it's just not. Uh, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna look at all my options. I'm gonna look at all the candidates. I'm going to look at all my options, I'm going to research them, and I am not, you know, I am going to make sure I take the correct decision that I find that it's going to be the actual person that wants to take care of us here in this country. So, that was a, that was a little bit dragged on, but uh, trying to make these episodes a little bit longer than usual. I've had some requests, they want these episodes to be longer than 15 minutes, and I will explain, right? Let's explain this before I end the show. So 15 minutes was my thing because some people have a 15-minute break. Either it takes 15 minutes to get to the store, and that will be a chance for you to listen to my whole episode. So, you know, there is a, a few listeners that are, you know, hey, man, your episodes, you, you can make them a little longer and this and that. So, you know, I, I'm going to do my best to make them a little longer. And I have been working on something else before I let you all uh, go. I have been working on, uh, I've created a gaming channel. So I created a gaming channel to help me with, uh, hopefully this helps me more with the podcast, but uh, I created a gaming channel. I have a Twitch account, so um, I have a, a YouTube uh, that I that I made for, for my gaming channel. It's called, uh, uh, my name is called OG Gaming Pops. Okay, I know it's like, what? But, you know, original, you know, like I started with Atari, right? That's what I started playing. And I, you know, I, I played games, I, I played video games my whole life, basically, you know, I'm, I'm that's just the way it is, right? And uh, I enjoy them, you know, I, I wasn't that into them, um, I put a stop to them, and then now with this, I'm using this to, to kind of, to, to kind of go out there a little bit more, right? So I created that gaming channel, I'm on Twitch, and my YouTube, I believe it's also called OG, OG Gaming Pops, so, you know, go on there, it's, it's, like I said, it's fairly new. I made it a while ago because I've been working on different things. It just takes a long time, right? So I, I made the channel. So if you guys want to check it out, I play, you know, a lot of Call of Duty and stuff like that. But I stream live, right? I stream live and uh, just trying to get my name out there a little bit more. And uh, I do have it on my profile that I have a podcast and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, what I mean, just, just trying to get out there. You know, everybody's doing it. Like, not everybody's doing it, but everybody's using those sorts of medias to get out there, right? To get out there. And um, I feel like you have to keep up, right? You have to keep up with the times, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a gaming channel and just play, right? So i got a whole setup and everything. So I go on there and... And I play for about an hour, an hour and a half, like every other day and stuff. You know, I stream and uh, all these things. You know what I mean? You can also monetize through there, you know. But, I mean, that's obviously I'm fairly new to that. So, you know what I mean? But I did want to, to uh, throw it out there on my last podcast, on my last episode. I didn't say anything about it because I forgot. But, yeah, you know, go check out my uh, go check out my YouTube, you know, Bold Talk by Joe. You know, go check out my, uh, if you're into gaming, I have some some gaming clips up there, some gaming videos from my live streams at OG Gaming Pops, at OG Gaming Pops, that's my YouTube. Um, you'll see my face on there, you know, you'll see the, they'll say OG Gaming Pops streamer on there, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, go check those, go check those out, you know, subscribe and follow me, you know, uh, every little bit, every little bit helps. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Of course, I both talk by Joe. You know, I, I reestablished my TikTok again. I, I dislike TikTok. It's just more ways to keep to get trapped into scrolling, and uh, I hate that. But I, 
check it once in a while. So I'm on TikTok too, at Bold Talk by Joe, of course. Uh, go and check me out. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and uh, shoot me a message on Instagram and I'll answer your questions. And if you have any ideas for the show or anything you want me to talk about, you are more than welcome to to share those ideas with me. So everybody have a great day, the rest of the day, or whatever's left of the day or the week. Until next time, peace. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.